Hey guys, Elvin here. Gonna be doing reactions to Game Theory FNAF Sister Location Decoded FNAF 5. Didn't know they made a sister location. This was recommended by Marquise Pixley. So I guess on this one, what? Does some little girl got killed instead of a little boy? Yeah, guess we'll find out. Etheria, Etheria, no one. It's been half a year. So let's do this. Let's right. solve the secrets of FNAF sister location months before the game comes out. Isn't that a spoiler? Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where today the goal is to solve the biggest gaming mystery of 2016 before it even exists. Oh, so this already came out, so... You, Scott Cawthon, and here's how I'm gonna do it. We'll know it's 2018, so... ...little teaser hints on his site, but this time, he's tipped his hand a bit too far. Enough for me to get a solid theory going on a lot of key elements we'll see hidden throughout his newest installment, Sister Location. Okay. While some clues come from the teaser images and trailers themselves, the biggest revelations this time have come from the source code on Scott's website. So get ready eh? for a comprehensive preview of what Scotty has in store because by the end we'll have looked at every and I mean every element of this franchise from the original series of games to the novel to FNAF world to the ever-evolving source code on I still never Games. played the game <laughs> in our attempt to expose the facts behind the next trip to Freddy's now Scott hiding hints in the coding of his site is nothing new it was the source code that started the whole bite of 83 versus 87 debate back during FNAF 4 but this time it's a bit more than just a mere hint of what's to Damn, come. you're too in-depth into this. <laughs> story. So let's take this line but then I, I'm kind of saying with the World of Warcraft, just, of okay, not that in-depth. It starts off like a collection of letters and punctuation, but upon further inspection, you can make out repeated numbering patterns and letter combinations <laughs> representing days of the week. When pieced together, it becomes a schedule looking like this, listing out the days when certain animatronics are either available, booked, needed for a private party, or mat, either in maintenance or needed for a matinee show unclear which. It's also worth mentioning that four animatronics uh, probably are specifically called out here. BBY for Baby, BAL for Ballora, and FTF for both Funtime Freddy and Funtime Foxy. Now for those That's of you who don't problem. follow every scrap of information about these games, let me explain. Reddit discovered that Scott had gone and copyrighted various names, presumably for these new animatronics, and here we see it being confirmed. More on some of these guys in a minute. The thing I want to call out first is that there's clearly a fifth animatronic in this schedule, 05-OOS, out of service. But who could this be? In the uh, the bunny guy? Four animatronics. Well, that's where oh, this teaser the image different comes one. in. A few weeks ago, this image was up on Scott Games. A mask with glowing eyes and a tangle of wires, almost like tentacles, accompanied by this text. Quote, there's a little oh, bit of me in every body, end quote. Notice the <laughs> grammar Creepy. here. It's not everybody, but every body. This is our fifth animatronic, our out of service animatronic. I mean, well, they took parts it. from it to make artists. the others, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> all we can conclude about him. The text indicates that a piece of him, his soul, his mechanisms, whatever, is in every other animatronic body. This could have two possible explanations. Either he's possessed the other animatronics and is controlling them, which would explain the don't hold it against us line from the teaser trailer we hear over and over again. Don't hold it against or, more likely, he's the reason the other animatronics have life in the first place. This pile of wires mm -hmm. is kind of like the puppet from the original series, giving uh. gifts, giving life. Or maybe this is the puppet, a new and rebooted version hmm. of the puppet. Now stay with Maybe. me here. One thing that we've largely forgotten about since his first appearance back in FNAF 2 is how the puppet character just didn't fit in with the FNAF world. Sure, as it kept making appearances in game after game, we just kinda accepted its role, but seriously, 
Think about it, FNAF 1 through 4 were all about animatronics with big bulky bodies and an animal theme. But then, insert yeah. the puppet, thin and with a human face, complete with red cheeks, crying eyes, and red lips. Features that we haven't seen on anything else Spooky, until but not that terrifying. Now. Fast forward to sister location and we see humanoid faces everywhere. Ballora and Baby, rosy cheeks, lipstick. And now look at Day of the Tentacle over here. Notice that the ears can detach, separate itself from the main mask part of the face? It's the exact same silhouette that our puppet's face has had since the second game. Hmm. Additionally, if you look at the trailer for Sister Location very, very closely, you discover what may be a very cool easter egg. In the reflection of Funtime Foxy's cheek, we see... something. For all the other animatronics, it's a part of their body. For Ballora the Ballerina, we see the reverse of her arm and earrings. For Baby, it's her finger and bow. But Foxy here is reflecting something that has a bright red dot besides two colored streaks, aka a bright red cheek and two streaming tears. Uh, it's like that time we covered reflection mapping to find Super Smash Brothers hidden location. Could that be the puppet's face wait, reflection what? mapped onto the model of Foxy's skull? Regardless though, if you ask me, we haven't seen the last of the puppet in whatever form he comes in. And based on the designs of these characters, Sister Location might finally be giving us the origin story we've long been waiting for. Now hopping back to the source code, the next section shows us that there seems to be three file directories for various clients. The first is for a place called Chica's Party World, the second for private birthday parties, and the third for CRMN Institute. I can only assume oh, Carmen Institute or Criminal Institute. This starts to tell us a lot about the setting and universe of Sister Location. First, many people have speculated that the industrial feeling setting shown during the trailer for the game is a factory for the robots. I think we can get a bit more specific. Considering the availability schedule that we just covered and the client folders with various needs for birthday parties, supplies. It feels like this new setting will be a storage facility and distribution center for the animatronics, responsible right. for shipping them out to various gigs across the Fazbear locations. The reference to Chica's party world builds out the lore of the universe, showing another spin-off location to the restaurants, but also strikes me as just that, a reference, a fun easter egg, referencing the one animatronic who won't be appearing in this new game. So far we've seen versions of Freddy, Foxy, and a Bonnie hand puppet, but Chica has been noticed noticeably absent. And honestly, hmm. I think it's gonna remain that way. For some reason, it just feels like she doesn't fit in this new world. Oh, get out! Get out! Go on! Get out! 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 How to go on! You get out of here! <laughs> and so the mention of Chica's yeah. party world is a fun wink and a nod to a character that will be sorely missed. But to me, of all this section, the most crucial client is the last one, the CRMN Institute. Notice when you look at it that it has a subfolder called Project. This, to me, is incredibly important since every teaser image Scott has posted on the site related to sister location has been labeled Project.jpg. Seems like a generic naming convention, right? Wrong. I went to an internet archive database and dug through the source code of all the past teaser images from all of Scott's past games, only to find that his labeling system has been very consistent. His FNAF World images were all labeled FNAFWorld.jpg, images about the book were labeled FNAFTheNovel.jpg, even FNAF 4 teasers shared the titling of simply 4.jpg. The fact that Sister Location's images are all labeled Project, and that there's a client directory hinting at some mysterious institute and a secret project going on there says to me that if we're not headed to a distribution center then we're going to a place where these guys are getting experimented on which ties Gee. in with the trailer quote of you don't know what we've been through. these guys are being hmm. experimented on a project at some mysterious institute and they're, you can they're, that robots. they're not happy about it but perhaps the most crucial you can experiment on the source code shouldn't be is the anything last line. A line any issues for them. The we'll see if uh, wide open on the spirit story in them. for this new game. Service log, maintenance, CO, or care of, AFTN Robotics. Afton Robotics. What the heck is that? It's a good question. If you're like 99% of the fan base and only know the games, this might not ring a bell. But if you happen to buy and then make it through all 500 pages of the Five Nights at Freddy's Silver Eyes novel, then that name says all I have off never even thought, like, say, World of Warcraft see, books book, or anything like that, so. I'm not that much of a... The first is into that. Henry. <laughs> 
He's the father of the main character and the creative half of the company. The one responsible for designing and building the Sorry, robots that we all know and love. The other co-owner was, ready for this? William Afton, and he was in charge of the business side of the restaurants. Eh? Paperwork, taxes, things like that. So to see Afton Robotics in the source code teasing Sister Location is huge, because it means that the stories of Sister Location and Silver Eyes are linked. But get ready for this, here's the bigger twist. By the end of the book, it's revealed that William Afton is what we fans of the game would know as the purple guy. Yeah, in the book, purple Whoa. guy is revealed. Afton is the one who kidnaps and kills children while wearing Fredbear themed suits. His first victim is Henry's wow. son Sammy, followed by four other kids whose souls eventually possess the infamous suits. So, through these source code teasers, not only has Scott confirmed that this new game will be tied to the lore of the book, but will be dealing with a robotics company founded by and named after the child-killing purple guy. Now that's already a huge mind blow, and I'm about to go further, well, but at least the purple I guy's do, dead. let's address the elephant in the room, the canonicity of the book. The internet, by and large, dismissed Silver Eyes under the assumption that Scott said it's not canon to the first four games, but that's not I have ideas for true. books, if but his entire yeah. statement. No one really cares. It's hard for you, internet, since it's three whole paragraphs that aren't summarized with a TLDR line. He actually says, okay. quote, Sometimes the lore of something can become so crowded that you can't tell an original story anymore. The first four games and the books should be considered to be separate continuities, even if they do share many familiar elements. The mm. book is canon just as the games are. That doesn't mean that they're intended Kinda to be like my like stories. puzzle pieces. The they're, book my is stories are a bit dark, but... Five Nights very interesting. Kind of story, end quote. And this makes sense, right? The first four games were crushed under their own convoluted lore and fan base dedicated to making every new toe added to Foxy mean writing something. About them, no, I'm not no saying it's a bad thing to have people enthusiastic about your story, but it does become limiting when you make continuity errors or want to do something new with these characters. And with the Five Nights at Freddy's movie coming ever closer, it becomes even more... Wait, important. there's gonna be a movie? There needed to be room to insert actual characters into this story. You can't make a movie out of some pre-taped phone tutorials and silent furry monsters. Thus, enter Silver Eyes, which builds out new characters, new faces, and new stories that can be told in the setting of these games. So yeah, the separate canonicity of the book makes sense, but as Scott said, it's a reimagining, and obviously there's gonna be a lot of crossover. And based on that Afton clue we just saw, Sister Location is gonna be bridging the line more and more. So does any of this matter? Yeah, actually a whole lot, because if we take the Silver Eyes Sister Location connection to its logical conclusion, huge pieces start to fall in place. Let's start by working backwards. Based on the trailers and teasers, Sister Location's main animatronic is this clown girl. Okay. But the teaser trailer isn't the first time she appears. She's introduced at the end of the FNAF World Update 1.2, mm -hmm. something we discovered in our playthrough of the game over on the GT Live channel. Once you collect all the characters and beat Chica's Magic Rainbow, <laughs> long story not worth explaining, you're immediately taken to a cutscene where a mysterious figure at a desk apologizes to you for creating a robot that cannot be deactivated. The bot's name? Baby. We then see a pair of eyes light up, telling everyone yeah. to take their seats before cutting back to the room to see the desk guy lying there dead, presumably killed by Baby. Now, many people assume that Yeesh. desk guy was Scott Cawthon since he's the creator of the animatronics and the minigames that you play in FNAF World. However, <laughs> it'd be weird for Scott to kill himself. Plus, the dialogue from the FNAF in Space minigame, yes, again, FNAF World is a weird game, seems to imply that Scott <laughs> is a separate entity from this desk guy creator figure. So if desk guy isn't Scott Cawthon, then who else could he be? Well, now that we know that Baby and Sister Location both have ties to Silver Eyes, we can actually identify who this mysterious creator of FNAF World is. It's funny, the first Henry, FNF, or Five Nights at Freddy's thing was like, say, a brony well, not only music the video. Of the was the first ones I've ever his death also did a reaction to, the and the first time I've ever heard of this. <laughs> grief over the death of his son, Henry, commits suicide in the living room by letting one of his animatronics kill him. One that remains nameless in the book, but is clearly not any of the core six of Freddy, Foxy, Ch 
Chica Bonnie, Golden Freddy, and Golden Bonnie. In other words, Henry the Creator is killed in his home by a mysterious new animatronic, just like we see happen hmm. to Desk Guy in FNAF World. The events just line up. Now that's all the stuff that I feel really confident about, but now let's have some fun and take it even further. Admittedly, <laughs> I don't think that this is where Sister Location is headed, but there is enough of an evidence thread to take us to some awesome extremes. So let's have a little bit of fun with this, shall we? First, <laughs> notice how Baby is introduced to us at the end of FNAF World as two yellow eyes in the dark. And what's the first image we see in that game? Two yellow eyes in the dark, along with the iconic ending line from FNAF 4, I will put you back together. It's also the yeah. last thing that we see in the true ending to the game. Two yellow eyes saying, I will put you back together. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's no way that those are Baby's eyes. One, why would she say that when she wasn't even in FNAF 4? And two, we all know that that line and those eyes belong to the imaginary friend, psychic friend Fredbear. He's here, yeah. he's there, he's everywhere. Who you gonna call? Psychic friend Fredbear. Well, don't be so sure. Let me remind you of something. In the FNAF 4 cutscenes, each character has a specific color for their dialogue. Number 78787 it's a different shade of yellow. F F F F A zero. Similar, yes, uh, but definitely different from Fredbear. So very intentionally, Scott made this a different so character. Egg white? But in a strange twist, it's actually a color of yellow, dialogue or, shared with uh, one uh, other character we see in FNAF 4. Pigtail Girl. The <laughs> one who knows that the animatronics come to life and get stuffed with dead bodies. Yeah. Coincidence? Yeah! Or at least we all thought so last year. But look at her design! Dressed in a skirt with reddish pigtails and big green eyes. Just like the design of Baby. Hear that? Oh. The collective sound of so she was killed and put inside that body? Internet, or a spirit? Glowing eyes, shared dialogue color, similar designs, and repeated line of I will put you back together didn't convince you. It doesn't stop there. Remember the biggest lingering question from FNAF 4? The girls room? No one! No one had an explanation for it. I didn't have an explanation for mm -hmm. it. And yet Scott felt it was important enough to the lore of the story to show us. And now we might actually no, why? What if the girl is a part of the crying child's family? First, it would explain why we would see her color of dialogue reappearing in his final moments. As a family member, she would be there in the hospital with the boy as he tries to recover. And if she shares a connection with Baby, it would also tie together the random presence of Mangle in the room. One of okay. the key animatronics we see in Sister Location trailer is Funtime Foxy, which we can confidently say is an intact model of what will eventually become Mangle. Again, we're looking at the major details. Hmm. Yes, some things may or may not be there. Notice the lipstick, the red cheeks, and painted fingernails on Funtime Foxy, all of which reappear on Mangle. So in the two games, we would have Baby and Foxy linked. Is it a stretch? Absolutely! But then again, this is Scott we're talking about. To me, though, the coolest part about this connection would be in the name of the game. This whole time, we've been assuming that Sister Location was referencing some other spin-off chain of restaurants, or, like I said earlier, a storage and distribution center for the robots. But if the pigtail girl's soul is trapped in Baby, and she was indeed the sibling of Crying Child, the phrase Sister Location takes on a whole new meaning. Oh, it's just one game. Game. revenge. Game about one sister's soul trapped in the baby oh. animatronic getting revenge for her oh, yeah. brother's death. Just yep. don't uh. hold it against her. You don't know what she's been through. Or maybe now you do. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. The ball's in your court, Scott. <laughs> you should subscribe for more episodes of Game Theory. You should subscribe for more episodes of Game Theory. You should subscribe for more episodes of Game Theory. Yeah. Your vote. Are you excited about Sister Location? Yes. Probably never gonna play the game. Or no. Click on one to choose. Doesn't look that like my kind of game. And I'll just pause. But that's my action game theory. F and AF Sister Location decoded. F and AF five. I'm surprised how popular popular these games are, especially. I've only heard of it. Not everyone's into every single game. 
I don't like these frightening games. Spooks me too much. I like adventure games like World of Warcraft and stuff. Where you get to problem solve and build stuff. Well, I mean, you get garrison so you can build stuff like that. And work on reputation. You get to chat with a crap load of people. It's fun. But, uh, besides that, uh, yeah. Have a nice day.